not to counterfeit being sick by michel de montaigne translated by charles cotton this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org there is an epigram in martial and one of the very good ones for he has of all sorts where he pleasantly tells the story of caelius who to avoid making his court to some great men of rome to wait their rising and to attend them abroad pretended to have the gout and the better to colour this anointed his legs and had them lapped up in a great many swathings and perfectly counterfeited both the gesture and countenance of a gouty person till in the end fortune did him the kindness to make him one indeed quantum cura potest et ars doloris desid fingere caelius podagram how great is the power of counterfeiting pain caelius has ceased to feign the gout he has got it i think i have read somewhere in appian a story like this of one who sought to escape the proscriptions of the triumvirs of rome and the better to be concealed from the discovery of those who pursued him having hidden himself in a disguise would yet add this invention to counterfeit having but one eye but when he came to have a little more liberty and went to take off the plaster he had a great while worn over his eye he found he had totally lost the sight of it indeed and that it was absolutely gone it is possible that the action of sight was dulled from having been so long without exercise and that the optic power was wholly retired into the other eye for we evidently perceive that the eye we keep shut sends some part of its virtue to its fellow so that it will swell and grow bigger and so in action with the heat of ligatures and plasters might very well have brought some gouty humour upon the counterfeiter in martial reading in froissart the vow of a troop of young english gentlemen to keep their left eyes bound up till they had arrived in france and performed some notable exploit upon us i have often been tickled with this thought that it might have befallen them as it did those others and they might have returned with but an eye apiece to their mistresses for whose sakes they had made this ridiculous vow mothers have reason to rebuke their children when they counterfeit having but one eye squinting lameness or any other personal defect for besides that their bodies being then so tender may be subject to take an ill bent fortune i know not how sometimes seems to delight in taking us at our word and i have heard several examples related of people who have become really sick by only feigning to be so i have always used whether on horseback or on foot to carry a stick in my hand and even to affect doing it with an elegant air many have threatened that this fancy would one day be turned into necessity if so i should be the first of my family to have the gout 
but let us a little lengthen this chapter and add another anecdote concerning blindness pliny reports of one who dreaming he was blind found himself so indeed in the morning without any preceding infirmity in his eyes the force of imagination might assist in this case as i have said elsewhere and pliny seems to be of the same opinion but it is more likely that the motions which the body felt within of which physicians if they please may find out the cause taking away his sight were the occasion of his dream let us add another story not very improper for this subject which seneca relates in one of his epistles you know says he writing to lucilius that harpaste my wife's fool is thrown upon me as an hereditary charge for i have naturally an aversion to those monsters and if i have a mind to laugh at a fool i need not seek him far i can laugh at myself this fool has suddenly lost her sight i tell you a very strange but a very true thing she is not sensible that she is blind but eternally importunes her keeper to take her abroad because she says the house is dark that what we laugh at in her i pray you to believe happens to every one of us no one knows himself to be avaricious or grasping and again the blind call for a guide while we stray of our own accord i am not ambitious we say but a man cannot live otherwise at rome i am not wasteful but the city requires a great outlay tis not my fault if i am choleric if i have not yet established any certain course of life tis the fault of youth let us not seek our disease out of ourselves tis in us and planted in our bowels and the mere fact that we do not perceive ourselves to be sick renders us more hard to be cured if we do not betimes begin to see to ourselves when shall we have provided for so many wounds and evils wherewith we are bound and yet we have a most sweet and charming medicine in philosophy for of all the rest we are sensible of no pleasure till after the cure this pleases and heals at once this is what seneca says that has carried me from my subject but there is advantage in the change end of not to counterfeit being sick by michel de montaigne translated by charles cotton Read by Martin Giessen.